Greetings and a warm welcome to this international online Sunday service. Welcome to this marvelous place where we get to interact with the materialized presence of God in the form of his friend, Prophet Emmanuel Makandiwa. We had a week of celebration, a week of elevation, as we were sowing seeds in this season of blessing and this season of sowing. We believe that you've been sowing your seeds and if you haven't had an opportunity to do that, remember today is the last day as said by the prophet last week. So please get your seeds in as soon as possible. Let us engage, let us make our connections this morning. Well, we await an announcement by the prophet as he promised us on Monday. Pastor Karamba, joined by Pastor Chikuni, and in a few moments, we will have the Lord's friend with us. Shalom, Pastor. Shalom, Pastor Karamba. Always good to be here. Sowing, sowing, sowing. Receiving, receiving, receiving. <laughs> I like that response. <laughs> I, I believe that God, through the materialized presence of God, mm. has given us an opportunity to attach ourselves to the blessing. Right. To connect to that blessing. Right. The personification of that platform where our destinies may be realigned to what God intended. And we thank God for, for this season, mm. very sensitive time. Mm. You know, when you look at the description of the man we learned about in Job 29, and the materialization of that scripture is our father, the prophet. We, we see that blessing and even more than what we read in Job 29. But sometimes we can get um, vexed and lost in the glare of the brilliance of the description of the man. We might miss the conditions to that prophecy, to us realizing that, and the conditions were this moment of sowing. As I was watching again mm. what our father taught us last week, for me, Job 29 verse 13, allow me to call it a cryptic verse. Our Father gave us an explanation of that individual that qualifies us for that blessing. And like you rightfully said, it depicts our Father. Mm. But I think we've gotten to that point where we are smart enough to decode the message mm. and understand that our Father, probably due to his humility, and probably his prophetic office. He will try to move us away. But as a wise son, as a mature son, you get to that point where you begin to understand that. We are simply being given that image of that individual who happens to be our father, mm -hmm. that platform of blessing. And mm. we need to be able to understand that we are in a very sensitive season and what it was being described by our father from verse number one to verse number 13, mm. or verse number 10 probably is, 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 is an individual that qualifies us mm. and that blessing belongs to us. That's right. Through partaking or connecting to the one that carries that type of blessing. That's right. The blessing that outlives the, the, the carrier of the blessing. <laughs> a generation, cross-generational blessing. Uh, and a blessing that never dies, an immortal blessing. You will always understand basically through what we see happen around our father. Mm. The widows, <laughs> people that benefit directly from him, whatever form of assistance, spiritual, physical. You look at when he speaks, the world listens. You look at whatever he sets out to do, you can tell that there's a blessing operating here beyond our normal understanding of blessing. Sometimes, rightfully, he says to us, some, some of these testimonies, I can't even give it to you. You begin to understand the nature of the blessing that he carries, and we are very, very much privileged to have this opportunity. Like I said before, it's been a while. It has. He has denied us this opportunity mm. for years, and he's giving us this opportunity in this season. And unfortunately, today might be our last day, or is our last day, and, It's a very sensitive time. It's a very sensitive time. And, and on that note, we encourage you, if you haven't had an opportunity, if you maybe missed last week's Sunday, 
or maybe you just didn't have um, the details, please make use, exceptional use of the details that were provided. And so your seed today, the moment has come. We've elapsed the seven day period that we were given. Um, we're about to receive now from, from the Lord's friend. Can I just ask for this? Please, the team behind the scenes, can we just have the banking details on the screen so that at least people can have those screenshots and make sure they try and do something today. And remember, like what Pastor Coramba said, our office is open right now. And we've got those numbers that you can com communicate with the team mm -hmm. and they can assist you. So please, it's very important that you have those banking details mm -hmm. and not miss this opportunity. Sometimes you may get carried away and probably move into something else. And yet we are denying somebody that wonderful, that special opportunity That's right. to, to partake of this blessing. That's right. So please. Manifest. <laughs> <laughs> wow. You know, the types of fasts we've been introduced to by our father in recent years have been astounding. Um, feasting and not fasting. <laughs> fasting of the body. Manifest. So many of them, but particularly on the issue of the manifest. Fasting a particular amount of money that your soul feels comfortable with. Ah, what an amazing powerful message. Mm. For, Eating thy bread to the hungry. Well, you know, you know that, that for me, I didn't want to take it as if our father is introducing something new. Mm. I would take it as our father is decoding something that we should have gotten or decoded years ago. <laughs> He's bringing to the fore a revelation of what has already been given to us. Right. But probably... He's the one to decode that and give it to us in this time. Right. So it comes back to the point that we have a man that takes time mm. to understand scripture. I don't know if, if this is the right way to say it, but in as much as Jesus is the word, his disciples also are an image of the word. And that kind of revelation, that kind of information only comes from one who has a relationship mm -hmm. with God. Mm -hmm. And we have a man who comes and he explains that sometimes we do our own things and expect a blessing and expect certain things. We do certain things, not because we really understand, but it seems like it's, it's the normal way of getting closer to God. And yet you don't get closer to God. In fact, you, you, are, you are removing that insulation on you. Mm. That has already always existed, and it, it's a, it's an amazing season. It's you know, amazing the smile season. you put on your face when you said the insulation. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, manifest uh, insulation. <laughs> uh, powerful. Um, we'll need to get to that teaching. <laughs> and encourage others that haven't had an opportunity to to, to watch to mm. that and to watch that. It was so powerful. We're just creating a little moment here so that you can make use of the banking details that are on the screen. We trust that you've had an opportunity to do that now. Allow us to take these few moments to introduce our father. Greetings, our father. Greetings. Blessings to you. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Well. Father, we are so grateful that you, you gave us an opportunity to sow. Um, we, we were worried and uh, we continue to get worried because we look at the amount of word we get, um, the opportunities we have with you and the very few times that we've had an opportunity to sow. And Father, thank you for allowing us to grab this opportunity with both hands and to utilize this time of, of giving. We are so appreciative. Thank you for sharing yourself with us, um, for allowing us to move into that description of who you are that we found <laughs> in Job 29. <laughs> We're so grateful for that, Father. Um, Father, we thank you for uh, giving us audience on Monday and um, uh, hearing out the uh, inquiries of the pleads that came sure. concerning this opportunity that you gave us. Father, you did say you had an announcement that you're going to give us today. Um, sure. And we're not certain whether we will get an extension or will remain, or this will be the, the last day. 
But um, Father, as we said, those were the issues that came and um, the desire still remains, uh, even so still today, Father, for us to have an opportunity to extend. Um, but Father, we look forward to your announcement today and um, <laughs> we thank you. Well, uh, we are very much blessed and privileged to be living in uh, such a time as this. It's an exciting moment. Thank you, Father. And uh, I would like to thank our viewers for opening up and communicating with us concerning uh, their concerns and, and their worries, like you highlighted. I would like to start by appreciating those that managed to commit, which is a very important thing that when an announcement is made and an opportunity which is divine is created for the people to participate, that they respond when people respond. I don't think there is anything as good as that. And I would like to appreciate our people, our viewers, for that kind of support. Like I highlighted last time, we have quite a lot that needs to be done. Yes, Father. Yes, Father. We have a mandate, we have an assignment. And the creation of a comfortable place, a safe haven, is our responsibility. We are the peacemakers. We have been sent by God here to make peace. And we are aware that He has laid upon us His hand and appointed us to be the creators of, of peace. So there is need for such a place where one can visit, spend time there in a concentrated or cultivated or harnessed presence of God and you're there for some time. And uh, whatever ideas that the Lord do drop into your spirit while it's you are in such kind of a place. Those ideas will determine your next phase in life. But for that to happen, there is need for partners. So, I understand that it is every man and woman's desire, especially those close to us, to want to be in such a place. But obviously there is some kind of uh, expectations and requirements before you can settle in. And some are not in a position to uh, help themselves financially. They desire, they wish they could be present in that kind of an environment. But for them to be there, they have to be looked after. The question is by who? And for them to stay for at least three days, there is need for them to have something to eat. The question is from where? Where is it coming from? That was the reason why people had to offer something for their stay in the life heaven. But we want to make it even much more easier for our people. And, um, and I, I realized that for that to happen, 
it calls for quite a significant amount of money from the people. And um, which means then that you can't have that in one go. It's a long-term project. Yes. Because you can imagine even just trying to accommodate a thousand people, even two thousand people, the kind of facility that you would require yes, for that to happen. Yes, sir. We are talking of real money, serious money, of which it was supposed to be a project that is introduced, given to the people, and then it runs for at least three years, four years. Just fundraising towards that. So it's an ongoing thing, and uh, we want to keep supporting God's work. It's a place for you, for your children, and even for the generations to come. So it is important that we look at all those things that we have in our hands and do that which is right in terms of supporting God's work. But obviously we'll get into some a few things, very, very few things today. I'm not here today to preach <laughs> in as much as <laughs> you guys would want me to get into the word. Because yeah. that's our source of life. But to we'll try to make it very, very, very short so that people don't end up forgetting other very important announcements that I'm going to give, like you promised on Monday. But I'll be coming and making an announcement. Uh, there is a, an observation over the years of practicing the Word of God and doing what the Lord says in His Word, especially in the line of giving, sowing and reaping, giving and receiving. I've learned quite a lot through observation and even through experience. I've watched as if not millions of Christians making devastating mistakes and some have not yet recovered from those mistakes. If I wish there was a way of educating the body of Christ uh, in the area of giving right and receiving right. Mm. Giving well and receiving well. The art of sowing against the art of receiving. How both of those areas are equally important. Because you are never a good giver unless you are a good receiver. And sometimes the reason why you don't have anything significant that you can give, it is because of your inability to receive mm. significant gifts. Because mm. that is exactly what occurs first. You have to receive before you give. Givers are receivers. Mm. Givers are receivers. There is no giver who starts by giving before he receives. Mm. Otherwise, you don't have anything to give. Uh, there is something that is bothering most people 
which I feel needs to be addressed from the way that we are going to be giving. Um, to avoid unnecessary mistakes and praying about it and wanting to hear from the Lord what is the correct way, what is the right way of realigning your people so that if they are to save you, you, God, you have to be the one setting the pace. We have to walk according to your dictates. We don't have to sit down and come up with formulas and our own preferences. Mm. It has to be God telling us how he prefers being served. So for that to happen, then there is need for one among us to be able to hear what God prefers. Yes, Father, yes. He communicates that with the people. Um, if one needs to be manipulated first, if one needs to be brainwashed first in order for him to give money, Uh, is that then the reason why people end up giving money to their wives? Because they are brainwashed, is it? Is that the reason why when you pull out a hundred dollar note and you hand it over to your daughter, is it because you are a victim of brainwash? Should one be brainwashed first before a dollar leaves his pocket? Because we are giving out money to several other places and no one is being accused for brainwashing people. It's an act that is sanctioned even by God. It is divine. Giving is a, an extremely divine expression. If you are a product of God, you then have the God DNA, mm. which compels you to share and distribute what you have. Yes. You act like your father. It's a manifestation of who you are and what you carry. But these, these are some of the mistakes that I've seen. Why you give today and you face an attack tomorrow. There is a bond and, and a connection that is created The day that you decide to find a seed from your reserves and you bring it out and you isolate one seed out of the rest that you say, this seed is what I'm fasting. You separate it from the rest of the flock and then you hand it over to somebody who is in need of that seed. It is not just the departure of the seed from your stock, from your pocket, from your bank account, but you have created a line that is a connection between the giver and the one to whom the gift is given. There is a, a, con a connection every time you give to somebody. There is a connection that you have created. 
The reason why he's able to receive from you, if it is the poor, it is because there is now a communication mm -hmm. line mm -hmm. that has been created. And he is now receiving from you because of that pathway that you have created. He is receiving from you through a pathway. Mm. There is a tunnel mm. or a channel. And things are now getting to him because there is a channel that has been created. Mm. So seeds are flowing towards him mm. because of a channel, a river, from you to him. Okay. But you know, when something happens at the end of the tunnel and there is a blockage, and you, you are trying to keep on flowing towards him, things are going to go wrong over here. Because what is supposed then to be going that direction then starts coming back because there is a blockage. So when water is flowing from here to a place over there, we must always make sure that the way is clean as far. Well. And the water gets into the reserves freely, unhindered. But if something is wrong over there, you, you keep releasing, you keep giving. And then after the seed has left you, if it is not properly received over there, it might end up affecting the source as well. Now you are beginning to see a flood that is coming from where it was supposed to be kept. It's now coming back. There are so many issues. When you now have that link and that connection, it's no longer just you giving to the poor, but the poor also will start making contributions. It is how now you manage what is coming back from them. Mm. It is how you manage that. Mm. And if you don't understand what comes back to you from them, mm after making that connection, if you don't know what comes to you. Those are the things that you end up calling attacks. It is the life of the men that you have just helped. Mm. Mm. Wow. Okay. Yes. Mm. Mm. So Father, is there some sort of exchange that is happening in a sense? Yes. There is an exchange, but the valve that comes back has to be tightly closed. You must be strong enough. You must have had enough training with regards to giving. You don't just give because you have found money. You got your salary. You don't just give because hmm. yeah, you have something to give. We don't just sow because we have something to sow. Mm. There is need for a qualified soil to present itself before the seed. Okay. We have to be moved by qualifications around us. Things around us must qualify for what we carry. There is a level of giving that um, you can go ahead and give whichever way. You don't mind what happens after. But there is a, a level of giving that you get to where even Jesus recommends that you consider the nature of the people that you're giving against the value of the seed that you carry. Hmm. Then his proposal in the Bible was 
do not give your pearls unto swine. Mm. Do not hand over your bread to the dogs. Pearls are very expensive. Yes, Father. Uh, jewelry, important, whether to call them minerals or what, I don't know. But for you to get a hold of a pearl, you would have gone through thick and thin. Yes, and then finally, when you have it, there will come a day when you feel like you want to hand over the pearl. But Jesus says, make sure the person qualifies for the pearl. Because Jesus said, what they are going to do, they are going to trample upon the pearls. So destroying the valuable pearls that you have given to them, and when they are done, they will come after you. Yes, Father. What does he say? He has just explained to you what I was trying to explain to you as well. Indeed, Father. Yes. There is a backlash where you are being fought by the lifestyles of the people that you are trying to help. You gave them the best. Hmm. And your best was never their best. And they trample upon your seed. When they are done with the seed, they get into the tunnel and they come back to the source. That's what Jesus said. Hmm. So most people that are being attacked today, it's not even the devil himself doing that. It's the people that they've tried to help. So you must have an understanding of what needs to be done in order to control the valve that brings back the backlash. So that you control what they say mm. after helping them. The day you get to hear what they're saying about you, even after helping them. That's what Jesus said, they will come after you. That's what he meant. So how do you close that valve so that you're no longer affected by what they do after you have tried to help them? Well, that's not for today. I might end up taking too much of your time, but there is need that you get educated first. You must have a superseding blessing, wow. a superior <laughs> blessing. Yes, that's very important. Your blessing has to be uh, intense wow. before you start the distribution uh, uh, exercise. You have to have the blessing, not just the money. Make sure you have the blessing. Yes, and it's very, very confusing. Some people with money, they think it's the blessing they have. No, please, have the blessing first before you start giving out money. Can you imagine people have a way of controlling the much that you are left with, with the little that you have given to them? It's a confusing thing. Indeed. <laughs> yeah, even scientifically, you can't really prove that. And yet it happens where out of $100, a dollar that you give to somebody, something can be done with a dollar to then control the $99. You see? Yes, Father. Because the money that you are left with, a part of it that represents it, has been given. So the part that represents the 99, something can be done with a dollar against the 99 huh. dollars. What do you mean, Father? 
things. This is why it is very important that you don't give your pearls to swine because they have a way of destroying what you have given to them and they have a way of finding their way to the 99. Can I read the scripture for <laughs> No, 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 let's <laughs> <laughs> what someone does with your money matters. What they then do with your money is very important. Do you know there's someone who can't wait to get a hold of a penny, a dollar from your pocket? That's all that they need. Mm. In the world of witchcraft, that's all they need. Mm. Mm. Explain to me, how do you get somebody's shirt? A woman lost a garment. And with the garment, the cycles of that woman get affected. All she lost was a garment. And with the garment, the lifestyle of that woman is now being controlled by something that left. Mm. It's not like somebody takes the garment, she prepares the garment and then she brings it back so that when you touch it, some. it's not like a chemical reaction, no? She takes it from your body, it never returns to the body and yet the body begins to be manipulated mm. by something mm. 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 that came from it. Mm. Because everything that once touched your body, like I told you, wherever it goes, it becomes like a web. You remain connected, even to the money that you have given to the poor. You remain connected. So whatever they do with that money, <laughs> mm. there is still some currents or electricity that flows through that channel of giving back to you. That is why he said, Make sure it's not a pig. Yes, Father. Make sure it's not a pig. There are people who are poor today because of the way they gave. They didn't know. Mm. They thought what qualifies you to give is money. <laughs> it's the blessing. <laughs> it's the blessing. I will give you a very important announcement in the next few minutes because the announcement is very important. That's all that we need to do today. When you receive a blessing from somebody, that somebody behind the blessing, his fingerprint and his presence will remain on the blessing. So it's not just the blessing that you get from someone, but that someone who blesses you. There is the presence of that individual resident within the blessing. It matters who blesses you. Okay? Yes, because the personality of that individual accompanies the blessing. So, are you blessed? Yes. Who blessed you? That's very important. Now, if, if I say, come here and let me bless you, some people feel like it's an act of pride because to them, maybe because of their uh, limited understanding of the word of God, they believe only God can bless. Who is he to bless you? Whatever you feel like doing, do it unto the Lord and God himself will bless you. Is it against scripture that a man can lay his hands on another man and releases a blessing? Is it confirmed in the word of God that one can bless the other? You know, you find that in several scriptures and yet people still cannot find it. Mm -hmm. Now, I gave you a scripture last time where Jesus said, 
bless those that curse you. Mm. 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 To imagine that there is the word bless, and it is Jesus instructing us to bless. You can see it, and yet still you can't see it. If Jesus tells you to bless, it means you can bless. Yes, Father. It's not him mm, mm, mm. blessing, it is you yes, given a mandate by God mm. to bless somebody. To think there is going to be someone happy for the rest of his life because he got a blessing not from God, but from you. And you blessed him because you've got an instruction from God. How, how, what scriptures are we talking about now? If people cannot see that, what else are they seeing? I wonder. If you can't bless, if blessing someone doesn't really work and it's only God who can bless, why would he? ask you to bless if you can't? Why would he ask you to bless if you don't have the blessing? Mm. Uh. Can he advise you or instruct you to distribute what he has not given to you? No. It's impossible. So he's telling you, when you hear him telling you, bless, then you are in a blessed state. Wow. You are not the one seeking for the blessing. Hmm. But the one attacking you is the one who is under a case and is in need of a blessing that you have. Bless him. Did he say, ask for me to bless him? Bless. Bless. So if he says, don't curse, he's also telling you that you have the capacity the ability to curse. Otherwise, if your case would not mean anything, he would not even advise you not to, mm -hmm. to curse. Yes, he will just let you go ahead and curse because he knows it doesn't, it's never going to work. But if he tells you, don't do this, he knows if you are to do it, it's going to work against the person. Mm. If you bless, and the man is blessed, he has never met God anyway. Mm. But he has met a man is under an instruction to bless. So, there is a place in us that contains the blessing. A place in us that contains the blessing, just like there is a place in the earth that contains the blessings of the earth. Not everything on the earth is valuable. Stones, minerals, liquids in the earth, they carry different value. Mm. Certain portions are richer in other places than other portions. Okay. So, do you have access to that place within you? Do you have access to that place within you? The place that contains the blessing. Mm. Now, some, because they don't join us every time, they don't get to know that probably this is our fourth or fifth offering that we are doing mm. since lockdown. Yes, Father. Yes, Father. Okay. And a wise person can pull out a calendar and count the weeks and the days that we've been coming and preaching on several other issues. And yet only this could be the fourth mm, mm. serious offering that we are doing. You don't get to see our bank accounts every time on the screen. Yes, Father. So we, it means we don't specialize in that. We specialize in something else. Yes, Father. But when that opportunity is created, we are serious about it. God 
in chapter 2 of the book of Genesis. He took the man and placed him in the garden mm. of Eden. But before we get to that, I want us to look at Proverbs chapter number 3. We know it's a common scripture, verse number 9, Proverbs 3, verse 9 and verse 10. Verse 9, honor the Lord with thy substance and with the first fruits of all thine increase. So shall thy barns be filled with plenty and thy presses shall burst out with new wine. Honor the Lord with what? With thy substance. With a song. Substance. With prayer. Substance. You honor the Lord with your substance. So let's call it the seed of honor. Thank you, Father. Okay. Thank you. The seed of honor. You honor the Lord with your substance. And the word substance there is money, wealth, material possessions. Mm. And with that, you honor the Lord. Uh-huh. And with the first fruits of all thine increase. You honor the Lord with the first fruit of all thy increase. As long as the Lord is increasing you, you honor him. So if you don't do that, are you going to hell? No. So if I'm going to heaven even after not giving, what's the point of giving? It is the bringing down of heaven upon the earth that made us. So to some people, all that matters to them is going to heaven. Some of us, what matters is the coming of heaven <laughs> down to earth. On the so. earth. And what is going to happen? So shall thy so barns, shall, there is a condition, mm. so shall thy barns be, be filled with what? With plenty. There is a multiplication. <laughs> Your reserves are going to be filled. This is against economics or even accounts. Mm. How do you increase? By subtracting. You are giving, honoring the Lord, and then you are multiplied in the process. Mm. It's a supernatural thing. Giving is for supernatural people. Mm. Mm? <laughs> Don't try it if you're carnal, if you're physical. <laughs> Sowing is for spiritual people. Okay. So, book of Genesis, chapter 2, verse number 8. Verse 8, Father. And the Lord God planted a garden eastward in Eden, and there he put the man whom he had formed. The Lord planted a garden east of Eden. And there he did what? He put the man. He put the man. Mm, he who put he had formed. the man whom he had formed. I want people to stay with me on this part. This one. It's, it's a very, very, very critical piece. People have to get a hold of this revelation. If God is to put a man into the garden, it means that at some point, man was outside of the garden, mm -hmm. living a life away from the garden concept. Mm. Yet that life outside of the garden was a life. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the life outside of the garden is the same with the life in the garden. There is no point in God transferring the man. So already from the beginning, before any case was pronounced, places were different. Mm -hmm. 
Mm. Mm. So, the dust now I'm away, the dust that God took, and then with that dust he formed the man. That dust was never from the garden. It had to be outside of the garden mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. for God to then take the man into the garden. Okay. Okay. So Adam is coming in as a foreign material ay, 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 into ay, the ay. garden. So God took the dust of the ground and then he formed man. And the man was formed. He was alive, a living soul, but outside of the garden. Wow, wow, wow. So. We have the earth completed, but God goes on now to create another place which wasn't part of the creation of the whole earth. So the man is over there and God goes on to plant the garden mm -hmm. eastward of Eden. Mm -hmm. Now, already we are hearing of a name, the name of a place, Eden. Who named it Eden? Ah. So man has been formed, God takes him into the garden, but before he takes him into the garden, God had to plant mm. the garden. Mm. The planting of the garden is the part that I want our people to understand. The planting of the garden. The planting of the garden has two meanings. The common meaning is where you have an individual planting either seeds or, or uh, trees or flowers to come up with what then is called a garden. So you have planted a garden by planting the trees and the flowers mm -hmm. and the, some crops as far in the garden. So what you have planted is the vegetation. But there is a hidden interpretation where, especially if it is God planting the garden, it ceases just to be the trees that he is planting, but the planting of the garden itself, where it's not a tree that God is planting to come up with a garden. It is the garden right. itself right. that God uproots from a certain location and then he comes and then he's, what he's planting is the garden. Okay. That's funny. <laughs> <laughs> a piece of a spiritual place or maybe a percentage of heaven that he donated. And before man goes on to give, God demonstrated he is a sowing God. Because mm. if he planted, right. he's a giver. Mm. He believes in sowing. Mm. Mm. So the garden was a seed. I'm not talking about putting a seed into the garden. I'm talking about the garden itself being a seed that God planted. Because he wanted that one piece of the garden to then multiply and overlay the earth. Mm. Whatever that garden was, now I know it was a seed. How do mm. I know it was a seed? Mm. It was planted. What else do you plant? <laughs> <laughs> so God now is already in the business of sowing. Wow. Mm. Mm. So if God is ever going to take men into a planted garden, it means he's introducing him into a system of sowing. Ah, 
God's powerful father. Okay. There you can survive. It's a better life when you're within a region of sowing than outside. You can make a choice. Like some of the people, they've made their decisions never to be givers. Yes, there is a life for you outside of the garden. But the moment you get into the garden, you have been accommodated within a seed that God has offered the garden. So, what is happening now is you have a man who has been formed by God outside of the garden. Now God takes him into the garden. Mm. So there is a transition, pastors, there, where man is being transferred. And God says, you have lived here for so many days. Now it's time that you, we move you to a better place into the garden. Now, the reason why I believe that the planting of the garden was not the planting of trees and flowers. The reason why I believe that is because according to my understanding of God's analysis, when he looked at the earth and he saw that it was good, it means there were flowers already mm. and trees were in order already mm. Mm. all over the globe. For then God to come up with a place called the garden. Was it just the arrangement of trees? What would make that garden a garden and superior to the rest of the place? And yet the rest of the place, God looked at it and he said, it is good. Yet the place that was good, that God said, this is good, was not that good for the man. Then he moved him into the garden. What was the difference? That's why I'm saying it wasn't the planting of the trees. Mm. Okay. That's deep, Father. But the garden was a unique place. The material of the garden was superior to the material that we have on the earth. That garden in Eden was an elevated position. It was a seed of heaven. Mm. It was a combination of both physical and supernatural material. Mm. 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 Okay. Yes, Father. Yes, Father. This garden was the landing place for God, God was comfortable visiting the man. Wow. To a point where even if a man is not present in the garden, still God would visit the garden. Mm. 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 So he would come because of an, a place that was attracting him. It was a seed. He was pursuing, following up on his seed. Yeah, that connection. So if he is in heaven, he feels comfortable. When he gets into the garden, he is still in heaven. But we have released a spirit, a man that we have formed, who is accustomed, who is used to the atmosphere of heaven. And then we have put him on earth. He needs to keep on getting access into heaven. Let's create a garden. So a garden was planted. It was a piece of a supernatural place on the earth. So Adam is created now by God. God puts him into the garden so that he can dress it. So why dress it if God had already dressed it? Wow. So he didn't make a garden by dressing it. No. The rest of the earth was like a garden because he said it is good. Mm. 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 So what makes it a garden? The material there. God planted a piece of heaven on the earth. And there were trees in that garden unlike the trees that you would find outside. 
they had a different behavior. It's a tree that uh, Uh, maybe I will come to that at some point. <laughs> Please proceed, Father. <laughs> God puts the man in the garden so that he can at least observe the behavior even of the garden. He is not just there to dress it. He is there to learn from the garden. Mm. He is there to be taught by the garden. Mm. Keep on reading about the garden. You see some things that mm. not Adam is doing to the garden, but what the garden is doing to Adam. Verse 9. Yeah. And out of the ground. And out of the ground. Yes. Made the Lord God to grow every tree that is pleasant to the sight and good for food. The tree of life also in the midst of the garden. Yes and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And a river went Verse out. Verse number 10, and what? And a river. And a river went. A river, mm. not rivers. And a, a river. river went out. Out. So there is a place, there is a fountain somewhere. Okay? So a river is coming out. Not from the garden, but from Eden. Because the garden was in Eden. Wow. So Eden was the bigger place and the garden, the garden was situated somewhere eastward of Eden. But then a river from Eden. Mm. Okay, read it. A river. And a river mm. went out of Eden. Of Eden. To water the garden. To water the garden. So you have a river from Eden that goes into the garden yes, to water the garden. <laughs> and then the garden would do something to a river while Adam is observing. And from thence, from thence, it thence, was mm, from the garden. Mm, it was, it was parted, parted, distributed into four heads. Yes. And became into four heads. Okay. The name of the first uh -huh. is Pison. Uh -huh. That is it which compasseth the whole land of Havila. Yes. Where there is gold. Where there is gold, yes. And the gold of that land is good. Yes. There is Dilium mm -hmm. and the onyx stone. And the name of the second river is Gion. Gion, yes. The same is it that compasseth the whole land of Ethiopia. Ethiopia, Kush. Mm. See where the river is going. Yes, Father. To the black man's land. Ah. Don't want to talk about that today. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> where the blacks are going to be situated. Mm. The river went there before. Mm. Ah, from the garden. Mm. Ah, I wish I had time. <laughs> <laughs> Please, Father. Help us, Father. Wow. Uh, look at how God is sustaining the first location. Yes, Father. The land of Ethiopia. Mm. It wasn't called Ethiopia by then. But I don't want to talk about that today. But I just wanted to just wanted you to take note of that. Thank you. Father. Yeah. A river that flows towards the Kushites. A dedicated supply for the black man from the garden keep on keep on reading mm. and the name of the third river is hidekel mm. that is it which goeth toward the east of assyria mm. and the fourth river is euphrates mm. all these rivers all these rivers they have a similar meaning they talk of plenty, mm. multiplication, increase, mm. and speed. Wow. Okay. Yes, Father. Well. So, who is responsible for the creation 
of all these rivers, the garden. So you have increase, you have multiplication. Mm. 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 You have rapidness, acceleration coming from the garden. One river gets into the garden and from the garden it is multiplied. Now, so the garden is a structure that God had established responsible for production or productivity and multiplication of a river into rivers. So Adam has been put by God into a place so that he observes what a seed can do. Uh. I have planted a seed. I want you to see the capacity of a seed. Hey. I have planted a garden. So he is sitting within a seed, observing how a seed does to another seed. So Eden had to sow a river into God's seed. I don't know, I don't know if, 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 if what I'm saying is going to make sense to some people. It is, Father. Eden realizes that it is a need of multiple rivers, but Eden cannot supply the entire earth. So Eden hands over the little that it has, one river. Eden knows who to give the little that it has. So a river is given to the garden that God had planted. Okay. Mm. This is the same thing when you give to Jesus that God had, has planted. For God so loved the world that he gave. So Jesus is a seed. When you give to Jesus who is a seed and you give him your seed, what he does to your one seed, uh -huh. one river. So the parting of the one river into multiple heads, you have to identify where God has sown. So Eden knew what I have is too little for the earth. But who is responsible for multiplying the little that I have? The garden. So he directs his river into the garden. And Adam is there observing as one river gets into the garden. And then how it is divided into mud. I know uh, scholars, some they say it is four rivers getting into Eden and then it comes from Eden as one river. Some scholars think that way. Let's go by the Bible at least. Even if that's the case, still the garden is there to unite the divided river. <laughs> okay, but Adam is observing right, right, right. the place of multiplication. How when you are situated in a giving environment, the things that you begin to witness taking place, how little can become plenty. He's there seeing one river and it flows out as many rivers he's mm. observing. Mm. And to him, God keeps on reminding him, notice this is just a miniature. It's a concept. Mm. I want this multiplied because to me it's a seed. So you can't keep having that one place as small as it is. If it's a seed planted by God, Eden was supposed then to be multiplied. It was supposed to be multiplied. Okay. It's a place that can multiply little things. <laughs> oh. mm. So where, where do we find that garden today, it's not about locating it physically, like I'm telling you. It's powerful, Father. Notice you were formed by God. I told you before, you look at the earth, the amount of water that you find in the earth and the amount of soil. Same with you. You have soil, you have water within your body. Yes, the greater part of you is water. Yes, the greater part of the earth is water. Same, same. Mm -hmm. Same thing. <laughs> you are earth. Because mm. you have all. Things are growing on you like trees. <laughs> your hair mm. and so on. <laughs> that's, that's your vegetation. Wow. Okay? Yes, there is water within you. There is dust. 
So if you are to look at that, then you understand that the same way that God created the earth and then he allowed a piece of heaven to be situated on the earth. It means within you also is the earth. There is the garden within you responsible for multiplying the little that flows into it. If you are to identify that garden within you, the garden that if you have little, you let it pass through that place within you. Mm. And then one dollar becomes four dollars. That place, if you are to locate that place, how hard it is, just as it is hard to find that uh, <laughs> physical garden today, that's how hard it is as well. Mm. To locate that place within you. You think your spirit and your soul are not working together. There was need for Eden to supply water and to water the garden, and then the garden will then begin to multiply. There is a need for your spirit wow, wow, wow. to supply your soul with life, and then your soul multiplies Aye. the multiplication of your soul. You need Eden, you need your spirit to water your soul. And when your soul is watered by your spirit, which is the Eden, when your soul is watered mm. by your spirit, then your soul engages in a multiplication mode. As long as there is enough and sufficient water coming from Eden, from your spirit, into the smaller section, the soul, mm. then you are activated as a spirit by that continuous supply mm. into multiplication, into increase. Mm. And most people, their garden today is under care and maintenance. It's not functional. That garden is not working. Why? Because they don't know how to activate that garden. It hasn't been officially opened. No activity is happening there. That's the part that gets unlocked when an individual is getting is blessed. When you are receiving a blessing, it is the activation of that garden. Mm. Wow. Didn't Jesus say that out of your belly shall flow out rivers of living water? Yes, Father. If you drink, it is just one sip. You drink, and then that drink turns into rivers. Mm. Who are we? What are we here to do? Mm. You receive so little and what people will find coming out of you. We are a multiplication center. Wow. We are responsible for increasing the little that we have. Mm. If only that garden can be activated the activation of that garden. So when we are encouraging people to give unto the Lord, people are not getting robbed of their money. No. It's a channel. This garden, pastors, yes, this garden, yes, oh, when Adam finally was chased from the garden, have you noticed that we still have the liberty to access the garden today. Read it correctly, if not, not here, at home. When God chased him from the garden, he did not stop him from coming back into the garden. The angel that was put there with a sword that was spinning, mm -hmm. it was there to keep the way to the tree of life. Mm, okay, yes, not Father. back to the garden. Oh, 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 oh. Oh. Wow. It was the way to the tree of life, which was at the center of the garden. Not the garden. Not the garden. That garden can still be accessed today if it is a supernatural place. Both. It's a world of existence is that you, 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 need to, you need to be spiritually sensitive while you are there. 
You can see things that other people might not be able to see. You can eat from trees that if you ask the person next to you, get a fruit, he's going to ask you a fruit from where? Mm. Yet you are standing right next to a tree. <laughs> God is saying if a man is to get back to the tree of life, he's going to eat the tree of life and be alive and active forever, but in a wrong state. There's no more hope for him. So guard, not the garden, but the tree. Mm. The way to the tree. <laughs> the way to the tree. That's verse 24, Father. Mm. So he drove out the man mm. and he placed at the east of the garden of Eden cherubims mm. and a flaming sword which turned every way. Every way. Mm. Uh -huh. To keep the way of the tree of life. You see? So in as much as you might find it difficult to find the tree of life, but the garden is not as guarded as <laughs> we thought it was. As, as, the, as the tree of life. <laughs> <laughs> the garden can still be accessed. When you have finally found access, to that place, the level of multiplication that will begin to happen in your life is so tremendous. You are not allowed to stay with little. It's unscriptural. If God was in support of little, he should have given five laws to the people. Why multiply it? If what we have is enough, he knows what is not enough. God knows that. He knows this is not enough for the people. Then the little that was given to him because his garden is active, he would split that into four heads. Twelve baskets, leftovers. When the little that you have is handed over into the hands of a responsible man, an activated man. Ah. Do you know what a blessing is? Does the man who is trying to bless you know what a blessing is? Most people don't know. So I don't want to keep on going because I said I'm not here to preach today. <laughs> I'm here to just make an announcement. It is very critical that you partner with God. Do business with God. Have some of the shares of your company given to the Holy Spirit. Let him help you make money. The giving principle is something that is not practiced by the brainwashed mm -hmm. because then all billionaires are brainwashed. Mm -hmm. It's just the poor that are attacking the area of giving. Mm -hmm. Every billionaire that you can think of, look at how much they are putting into charity. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They might not believe in Jesus, but they believe in the principles of Jesus. Mm -hmm. Mm. And they are making money based on Jesus' principles. Yes, Father. Yes, Father. They are following the principles of the Lord, of the mm. kingdom of God. Mm. So now to tell me that all these billionaires are brainwashed and they don't know what they are doing. They are just losing their money by giving to the poor. You see, you are missing out on something. That's exactly what keeps on fortifying their soul mm. and they keep flourishing financially mm. because their spirituality is maintained not by songs, not by prayer, but by giving. Hey. It's a maintenance of their, they are, they are kept in a garden state. <laughs> mm. uh, my 
God. They make sure there is a budget annually. How much have we fasted? Yes, Lord. Yet they are not born again. Because they know if that kind of a percentage is detached from ourselves, we have exposed the spiritual aspect of the soul. Mm. And they keep making more by giving. And then we are the owners of the Bible. We are still debating about that matter. There is a way of giving that even when the day finally arrives that you have to depart. <laughs> Your departure has to be discussed. <laughs> you don't just die like that. <laughs> wow. Wow. There is a way of giving that really counts in the kingdom of God. I've been doing that from primary stage. And I've received counseling from my parents because they knew that was now the trend. You go mm. to boarding school when, when schools are closed. They have no bag to carry. They have no, there is no trunk. I'm at school, I'm there to learn, but I would look at other people and say, I didn't have enough, I didn't, from, even for myself. But I would look at other people who are suffering more than I'm doing. Mm. 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 I, would, I would love giving that, that boy my bag, but I can't give him today because still, school is still on. But the day we close, I would distribute all my clothes, the bag, and when they come to get me, they have nothing to carry. So you imagine every term this is happening until they had to sit me down and they said, I know you're trying to do what you've seen us do, but that's not the way that we do it. They started counseling me, teaching me, educating me on how to give properly. Wow. Okay. Wow. Until I matured, now I knew how to give. And I remember at one point, I worked so, so, so hard to get some money. And I got money, which to me was really a lot of money. Oh, and I was so excited. I said, hey, how do I make my... my woman happy. This was before we even wedded. I took all that money to her. And, um, and I was expecting her to do quite a lot with the money because it was quite a lot. Then we are in the same church. Here comes a certain woman and she's preaching on giving. <laughs> <laughs> and at the end of the preaching, she announced that, ah, I would want people who are going to give so much. And she started with the exact figure. And that kind of money, there were some guys that were rich in the church. They never stood up. So, when she announced that uh, I would want someone who can give so much, I was sitting there and I knew she was joking. No one is ever going to <laughs> give that kind of money. <laughs> <laughs> then while I was looking down like that, I heard her say, oh, we have one person standing over there. I said, oh, do we have such kind of a person in this church? <laughs> so I turned to see, then I saw my wife standing. Wow, I said, oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Did she hear what, what, what? Then, then she said, please, you can come here. Let me pray for you. Then I saw her walking up front. I was crushed. 
Oh, I said, this woman. <laughs> Does she know how I got this man? <laughs> I was expecting her life to change. And she never told me. <laughs> she's standing right there. She's receiving prayers. All my money is gone. <laughs> oh. I said, Lord, is there any future here? Are you sure? <laughs> <laughs> we are going anywhere with this. <laughs> ah. And then she went on to call for the next figure, next figure, next figure. No one was even coming. People with money then stood up. Later. See where it is coming from. Until now, we got married, we are in ministry, preaching. God would bless us. We would keep it for one week. <laughs> Those days, I wouldn't get to 30 days still driving the same car. <laughs> now, I no longer had parents close to me to counsel me. And again, I have now this woman. <laughs> you can imagine. <laughs> I had my own problems. And I think now I'm better. Here comes this woman. So it was giving. This time, they would see me, whether it's a provincial conference, I would come driving a nice car. And people are coming to congratulate me. And the next thing they hear, he's in a bus. Hmm. This guy, what's wrong with this guy? So I would not allow a seat to remain in the house. Would give almost everything. Because we were hearing from the Lord telling us it's time for so. There will come a time when it doesn't matter how many times you give you'll never run dry mm. because the river that gets into you will become bigger mm. even than the four rivers that gets out of you. Mm. <laughs> so we'd be invited to several churches, minister, and when they give us a seed, as a way of thanking us, would leave the seed with the men of God there. Mm. Mm. So what I got was a blessing, not money. Right. Some people have money. What I have is a blessing. I know that. Ah, so pastor, true. don't play. Don't play with me. That's it. <laughs> it's quite a no, the blessing. <laughs> money, you have it, but... Uh... <laughs> the blessing. Pastors, I have the blessing of God. I have it. And mine is a serious one. We know. No, it's not a small we thing. Know. <laughs> we know. You see, I... I knew from early stages how to activate that blessing. And I know if I am to bless a person, he is blessed. If I am to curse a man, it's a matter of a few hours. He's gone. Wow. So we are aware of the blessing that we carry. But what I want people to understand is balancing now. So that when you give, you don't lose out on the harvest. Givers are receivers. That's why they keep on giving. Now, I'm closing by saying, for us to balance this equation, we want to make sure that there are no errors and mistakes in the giving that you are doing. How do we eliminate those mistakes? We have to make sure that the person is spiritually conditioned mm. to physically mm. give. Spiritually conditioned to physically give. If you are not properly conditioned spiritually, mm. and then you give physically, that giving is physical. Mm. It might affect you. 
but there's a way that you give physically that will result in a spiritual dividend. The return has to be supernatural. Mm, mm. You have to engage in a fast. So okay. if you have a pen and a paper, okay, unless if your, mem your memory is, is okay, don't worry, don't write this, but this coming Friday, Saturday, Sunday, you are fasting. Friday, Saturday, Sunday. So you are fasting. Obviously, this is 12 a.m. Friday, right? Yes. Until 5 o'clock in the evening. That's Friday. Saturday, the same time. Then Sunday, as soon as we break the service, you break the fast. Thank you. So Friday, Saturday, Sunday. That's 19, right? Yes, Father. 19, 20, 20, 20 into 21. Then, the following Friday, Saturday, Sunday again, mm. you are fasting. Wow. Okay. Thank you, Father. What are the dates? 26. 26, 27, 28. All right? 26, 27, 28. You are on a fast. It's not the money that you're fasting, it's food. You are not going to eat, you're not going to be drinking anything. I want you to be praying. The reason why we have to do that, it is because of mistakes that you have made in the past, in the way that you were given. You were not spiritually conditioned mm. well. <laughs> You are in trouble because of the way that you have been given. Fast. For instance, in my case, I've had this revelation for years now. Now I know there are certain people that in order for them even to receive from you, you have to pray. You have to fast. You have to beg God to receive from you. There are people like that. Mm. In terms of people who can receive from you, anyone will take. If it's money, anyone can take. But what then is done to you is what matters. You need to be in the right spiritual state where you are fasting and you are praying for this season. When you are giving a seed of honor, it's not just you honoring God. Mm. It's God honoring you by receiving mm. from you. God had respect for Abel and his sacrifice. Mm. That's honor. So when God refused to receive the seed that Cain gave, what he actually dishonored was the giver of the seed. Mm. When mm. God receives a seed of honor from you, he has honored you. Mm. It's a moment of honor where individuals are going to be honored by God himself. Wow. wow. It's a season of elevation and multiplication where one thing is going to be multiplied four times. Mm. Whether it's one house, four houses. Whether it's one car, four cars. Mm. Connections are going to just multiply like that. Streams of income are going to be multiplied. It's a very sensitive moment. Mm. It's not just a seed of honor. It's a moment where God honors you for your seed. Mm. Thank you, Father. So not follow, follow this. So we said from 19, right? Yes, Father. 20, 20. 21. 19 is a Friday. Then 20 Saturday. is a Saturday. And then the 21 is, Sunday. is a Sunday. And then we break after the service. Yes, for the Sunday. For the Sunday. The Friday after 5 p.m. you break. Saturday after 5 
you break. Sunday after the service, you break. Mm. Mm. And then the following is a 26, 27, 28. Mm. Okay? You are fasting again. It's, it's a window. It's a season of graduation mm. where individuals are being clothed with a certain level of glory. Mm -hmm. A connection that you would not have had had God not offered this mm. season to us. But how do I respond to this? Notice, God wanted the tabernacle to be constructed. Yes, he did not say, I'm going to send money from heaven. God said to Moses, go to the people. They have the money. So they are not giving so that I will bless them for giving. I have blessed them. That's why mm. the Egyptians gave them mm. money. There was no point. There was no reason. Why would you give your gold mm. Mm. to a Hebrew guy that you know maybe tomorrow is gone? Mm. Mm. I gave them money because I had the project. And he said, don't force people. Those with a willing heart receive from them. So if God is having a project and that project is a place, even if that project is a person, even if that project is a team of individuals that are working so hard so that you keep on getting services, it's God's project. It's God's project. Okay. But people had to be prepared for that exercise. That's why we are preparing people so that you don't lose out on the harvest. Hmm. You can't remain inferior after this participation. No. So I would want you, if you can, don't, don't feel bad if you can't. It's not a sin, it's not a, no case is going to ever come upon you if you don't participate. You might have participated before. So relax and you take it easy. But if you can, if God gives seed to the soul and God gives you the capacity to handle this program, I would love to have at least a thousand people who are going to sow their seed of a thousand dollars. Thank you, Father. A thousand people who are going to sow a seed of a thousand dollars. Is it God telling me to tell you that? That's me telling you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's me. Is the government clear in as far as how much you get you, you get taxed? It's very clear. Father. Do they say out of your heart? No, no, Father. Are you sure? No, they are tax brackets. Sure. So it's not it's not like you have a choice. You out of your willing heart. No. Does God approve that? Is that yes. Is, yes. He approves that? Yes. Ah, Has the government brainwashed the people? No. <laughs> when God said 10%, wasn't that a figure? It was a it figure. Was. I'll say this again. I've heard people saying, no man of God can ever say, give so much. Yet God himself, the God of the men, he said 10%, mm. that's a figure. Mm. 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 Sometimes I'm at home, I'm reading my Bible, I'm wondering, is this the same Bible that we are reading? <laughs> Even if you say it was the Old Testament, still get to the reasons why would God ask for money, yet he doesn't go shopping. Even if it was the Old Testament, mm. why was he asking for, for Keto? Get to the reason why. 
because mm. he is still the same God. There's never been any election in heaven ever yes, since. Yes, yes, yes. The, 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 the desire in him to receive from his people transcends generations. Mm. Mm. Until Jesus comes on earth, he has several departments in his ministry. He never built a life heaven because he was the life heaven himself. <laughs> He didn't build a, a structure, yet he had partners. Women, the Bible says, they ministered unto him with their substance. Mm. He had financial partners, Jesus. Mm. 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 Jesus had financial partners, not prayer partners, financial mm. partners. Yes, Father. Mm. What is that? So I want you people to partner, and this is the reason why Judas had something to steal. Mm -hmm. because there was a bank account mm -hmm. that would be screened whenever Jesus is preaching. His disciples would distribute, this is our treasure. Yes. So they would receive money. People would go to Jesus' meeting and leave that place with missing dollars. Jesus having received from them. Yes, Father. Okay? Yes. Because today people, they just talk about how Judas would steal money, but they don't want to tell us <laughs> how the money was gotten. Mm -hmm. One mm -hmm. person must explain to you, how did they get that money? Yes, Father. He would keep on stealing today until there's no more money left. And then the next week after another service, there is more money in the account and he's stealing again. Because they were financial partners. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. So it's scriptural. Yes, Father. Okay. But a thousand people out of your willing heart. If you want to be part of this, you send your 1,000. And I'm expecting, th these are going to be five. I'm expecting 5,000 people to participate in this program. Mm. 5,000 people. 5,000 people. We have quite a big number of people that are following us. Yes, like you know now, the views that we have during this broadcast. This, this is just the number of the gadgets, not of the people. Yes, right. yes We have 10 people watching. Yes, okay. You multiply that and you've got plenty more. Yes. So imagine out of these gadgets that we see here, if only one person can commit, we already have 5,000. Okay. Yes, more than that. But most of the people watching might not participate. Why? Because not everyone is being invited to do this. You have to make sure that you participate in the fasting first. So we have thousand giving a thousand and I need another thousand giving five hundred dollars. Thank you. Thank you. Father. Okay. And another thousand giving $200 and another thousand giving a hundred dollars and another thousand giving $50. Okay? Yes, Father. Thank you. Thank you. Do we have 5,000 there? Yes, yeah. 5,000. 1,000 that are going to give a thousand dollars and 1,000 giving 500 and 1,000 giving $200 and 1,000 giving $100 and 1,000 people giving $50. Thank you, Father. Thank you. Now, because we have had people already giving from last Sunday. Yes, Father. I would encourage you from now up to the end of this month as we round up this fast that you just make sure that you get to any of these figures. Mm. After the, the lockdown, I would love to call for a conference. No. Wow. Okay. Where I will have not more than 5,000 people. I need the exact number. Mm. 5,000 people coming. So that we see each other face to face. Thank you, Father. A session prepared for those 
thousand because they did something and something needs to be done unto them. Mm, thank you, Father. Okay. So, I want you to push yourself if you have already given. So what do I do? Because last week I, I gave my $50. You already, you've already entered into the $50 uh, dollar bracket. But if you want to increase, let's say you, give, you have given $20, just add 30 more dollars. Mm. Mm. You now belong to another group. Yes, Father. But I am encouraging you now, child of God, to do the best that you can. What I'm personally going to be doing myself is to not give a thousand. Though I'm under that bracket, I have to fall under the 1,000 bracket, but it's not a thousand dollars that I am going to give. Mm, thank you. Because I remember giving so much to other causes before, unlike this one. So I'm smart enough to know that this is unique. So I can't have any other function that I might have given towards. And then here I underperform. I look at how many people that are under me that I would want to bring in who do not have the capacity. Mm. So a person like myself, I'm probably expected to bring maybe 200 people that I'm supposed to bring in. And then I know that I have a congregation that never had the capacity to come and join a $1,000 category. So I have my relatives, I have my friends that I've brought in. Some are not even maybe members of this ministry. But if it is 20,000 that I'm giving, I must make sure that my name is on top. And then I'm writing the names of people. Mm. 20 people. Mm. Find 20 people. Don't tell them that I'm giving money on your behalf. Some of them will say, give it to me. <laughs> <laughs> Help them become better. So, if I'm going to give 10,000, my name is on top and I have nine people under me mm. that I'm carrying into this program. Is it clear? It's yes, Father, clear. it is. Okay. So, start conquering and honoring territories. Thank you, Father. Become the head in that generation. Mm. Set yourself up for a promotion mm. where you begin to matter in the matters of your family. Thank you, Father. By this exercise. Thank you, Father. Where you are becoming the head. Where you say, no, 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 no. It can't just be me. I want to bring in people, even if it is two people, even if it is three, but your children. Don't just say, um, I'm sowing a thousand dollars as myself and my wife. No, 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 no. You have children as well. Get, let them get into that category. I'm encouraging you already. I'm encouraging people to make sure that you stay above. Thank you, Father. Just get to, I, start, I didn't say $10,000. I didn't say $20,000. Yet you know that last week we had somebody already who sold $20,000. Mm. Mm. $20,000 US dollars. Mm. We received it. So what that person is supposed to do now mm. is to put his name on top. That's already elevation that is happening. There is no way that God is going to be dealing with such a generation and he's not consulted. Mm. He becomes the garden, yes, Father. the opening. I wish I had time to explain further explain. <laughs> to you explain. about the garden. Father. Explain, Father. <laughs> Imagine the garden would link the heavens. God would come from heaven to the earth through the garden. Mm. Yes, Father. And the water from Eden, a well, a fountain, would come to the earth also through the garden. So it was a distribution center. Things from the earth would have to get to the earth through the garden. Things from heaven would go to the earth through the garden. That opening 
an individual mm. that matters, that connects the heavens and the earth. You are setting yourself up for that kind of a position that God will discuss generational matters with you. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. So, <laughs> I want you to go beyond. Don't be limited by a thousand. A thousand is becoming your minimum. Thank you. Okay. Yes, well. I would love meeting with you. And then we want to see the activation of the garden mm. where multiplication will begin to happen. It's unfortunate we might end up because this is a live broadcast. We have people who are not part of us mm. who enjoy following us and they are there every time we are. But mm, yes, well. yes. So this is a family matter. Yes, well. yes, this is a family matter. <laughs> okay. Yes, well. There are several other live streams that are streamings that are taking place right now. So people must be free to go and join those. Exactly. Here, we are doing the work of the Lord. Yes, and we are encouraging our people to support God's work. So a thousand dollars, thousand people. A thousand people, five hundred dollars. A thousand people, two hundred dollars. A thousand people, hundred dollars. A thousand people, fifty dollars. Thank you so much. Father. Now, until the 28th of this month. We are in... Uh, we are in March. March. We are in March. March. Okay. We don't want to hear people saying, Prophet said next month we are fasting. <laughs> we are in March. So you are fasting and you are gathering your seed. You are not going to give it at the end. From right now as I'm speaking to you. Thank you. You have secured your seed. You send your seed, engage in that fast. Mm. Thank you, Father. Thank you. Am I clear on that? You're yes, clear, Father. You're clear, Father. Thank okay. you. Okay. Engage in that fast. If it's a thousand dollar that you have and you saw it today, and then God blesses you and you find another thousand dollars during the week, you have somebody that you love. Mm. You love your children. Mm. So that again, if you realize that mm, maybe I can't because what I'm left with now, maybe I sold a thousand, now I got seven hundred dollars. And you've got seven children, if you are as blessed as we are. <laughs> <laughs> then all of them, you put them in a hundred dollar category. Thank you, Father. At least you have people that you are carrying on your back. Thank you, that's, the, that's the secret. Have people that you are bringing in. But that person that you are bringing in, he doesn't have to be someone who is already in there by himself. Bring in even some who are not even part of us. Mm. Okay. So in, on behalf of your company, so on behalf of your organization, so on behalf of uh, uh, your relatives that are some that are even lost, some that are not even born again, like some that don't even believe in what you're doing, but you still have to do it for them anyway. So have some people that you carry on your back. I want you to become a father figure Thank in you. these matters. Thank you. Where you are consulted before God does anything. So a thousand mark and the lowest is fifty dollars. Fifty dollars. Yes, sir. Okay. So you are not cursed. If you don't have, you might have another opportunity in the future will keep coming up with such opportunities. We still need your support. Thank you. But from a thousand to fifty dollars. But go beyond a thousand. If you have hundred dollars, don't join a fifty dollar group. Mm. If you have got five hundred, don't join a two hundred dollar group. Don't. Don't. If you have a thousand, so a thousand dollar seed. If you have twenty thousand, if you have fifty thousand, if you have a hundred thousand, if you have a million dollars, join right now. If you want to make it simple, if it's one hundred thousand dollars, you can still instead of putting I don't know hundreds of people. You can still increase your, it can be one person, 
10 people, 10,000 each. And then you just write it, just note it. Just note it. I heard you, prophet. You said 1,000. But I'm coming in, maybe I'm not sowing on behalf of anyone, but I'm sowing a $10,000 seed. It's just me. Still, that is okay. Okay, thank you, Father. Okay. Thank if you, you want to bring in another person, 5,000, you say, my, mine is 5,000, the other, I'm paying for him $5,000. That's beyond. Just break that limit. Just break that limit. Jesus once said it in some place where he said, if anyone asks you to go a mile, go two miles. It's allowed. It's allowed. So exceed what is expected. Mm. If I were you, I remember at some point you were asking me a question. Is it even good for God to say, can I have from you? Yet everything you have is his. Mm. You see. Go beyond. Go beyond. If I have a million dollars, I wouldn't want God to ask me for a hundred thousand. Yes, I would rather ask God for a hundred thousand because the million is his. <laughs> okay. Yes, so there's a level of honor that is coming upon people. Yes, it's a month of honor, a seed of honor. Mm -hmm. Pastors, while we are talking right now, make sure that we have the banking details. Is the seed of honor. You. Seed of honor. Seed. You will always remember it by that phrase. You will always be remembered as well that you participated. You send your seed right now. And there is the coming of the activation of the garden within you, responsible for multiplication. The best days of your life are still ahead of you. Thank you, Father. Thank you, receive. And I can assure you this. I've been in this thing for years now, and I believe I've acquired significant experience to help people navigate through the terrain of giving. Most people make mistakes. We are balancing this. Make sure you're on your fast. If the doctors are recommending that you don't fast, please don't fast. Don't argue with those professionals. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay? If you're supposed to be eating, please go ahead and eat. Okay? Yes, Father. And, um, but continue. I don't think the doctor is going to say don't give. <laughs> okay? <laughs> so go ahead and eat. But if you can, please fast. All of us, we are not eating, we are not drinking. What are we praying for? It's a season of honor. Thank you. We are placing a demand. My time to be honored has come. Thank you, Father. Okay? Thank so Father. we're going to be having honorables after, after this session. <laughs> so from now, you are sending your seed until we close the chapter on the 28th of March. Thank then you, we Father. know we are done. We are moving into the manifestation now the multiplication mm. of, the, of the rivers. Mm -hmm. you, you will flow. You that I can assure you. You will flow. It, and after that, we are going to make an announcement. As soon as we have that uh, uh, relief from the lockdown, there is a major conference that is coming just for these people. And then you'll see what is going to be happening Thank you, Father. during Thank that you, conference. Because Thank they've you. supported God's work. Yes, Father. Okay. Not because they're the only important people no. Even those that are not giving today, they're important because they've, some of them have also given before. Mm. You see, we are where we are today because of some of the people today who are not in a position to give. But pray that God gives you a seed. You can't get to that day mm. without coming across a seed in between. Mm. How can God instruct you to, to do that if he is not supplying? Yes, give us our receivers. Yes, we are giving because we have what? We've received. We have received. So it's our chance, our opportunity to sow the seeds of honor. I think that's it. That's what I have for the people today. Wow. Father, thank you so much for opening up the doors and giving us an opportunity and responding to the cry of the people that have been listening to you. The people that wanted their lives transformed by connecting to the blessing. Father, we come to the word. 
you would say probably you didn't spend much time, but Father, you have given us information that we... This is valuable information, Father. Oh. You begin from the idea where you highlight that there comes a time when we really need one who can convey God's heart in as far as worship is concerned. And you compare that to the ways and devices that men has come up with in trying to worship God his own way. And then you go to the scripture that you said, you mustn't read, but I, I felt it was very important. Father, you being a prophet, we know you have a tendency of concealing the condition. Mm. But Father, there's a statement that you uttered that I wrote down. There will come a day when you feel like you want to hand over the pearl. And you talk about the month of honor, the seed of honor. Mm. And Matthew 7 verse 6, I would also encourage my sisters out there to read that particular scripture mm. because it seems to have a meaning in terms of this particular season. Mm. And I, I pray it's not prophecy, Father. Yeah. I pray it's not prophecy. Father, there is a blessing that we've seen in your life. There is a blessing that we continue to see in your life. And obviously the projects that you then direct or highlight us to participate through or could try to connect with. Father, we thank you for that opportunity. Mm. We really thank you for that opportunity and the garden, mm. the planting of the garden. Mm -hmm. Father, it brings us to the principle that you highlighted, I think close to the end where you said, you must identify one in whom God has given or has gifted. Mm. Mm. And you take that back to the garden. It was a seed. Mm. And Father, to then connect to that seed, there is multiplication. Sure. Father, that's a deep principle. Oh. And I thank you. But this one, I, I will not go without, without talking about this. Mm. Activating the garden within you. Yeah. Yeah. Activating the garden within you. Wow. <laughs> we have read the word and the way you continue to reveal the hidden things of the Word of God, the secrets of the Word of God. Father, it just goes to show your relationship with God. Wow. Like it or not, but it, it's a simple explanation of your relationship with God. Mm -hmm. And Father, I really want to thank you mm -hmm. for qualifying us or positioning us in order for us to be able to get that spiritual dividend. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much, Father. Thank you for conditioning You're welcome. us. Thank you. You're welcome. We are indeed we are thankful, Father, for yeah. the joy of this extension. <laughs> yeah, and also sure. conditions coming forward and the time of fasting to condition ourselves mm. to fast physically. Yes. <laughs> mm. Mm. Father, we are grateful. Um, we'd like to give our brothers and sisters an opportunity now, mm. if they can after this service, to just begin to sow their seeds. Sure. Thank you so much, Father. Bless you. Thank you. Our time has come. That's the time indeed. We are grateful for the, the extension. Uh, seed of honor. Mm -hmm. Banking details will be on the screen. Please make use of them. The WhatsApp details will be attached as well. Please make exceptional use of those. Get all the details necessary for you to sow your seed in this time. Do not forget that we are fasting starting from next week, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and the week after that. And we are sowing our seeds at the same time. Find yourself in either of the five categories, 1,500, 200, 150, a thousand people each. And I know we're already jostling to find ourselves in the thousand dollar bracket. Let's go ahead and do that until we meet next time. Ciao.